What's up guys? So I've been having some technical problems lately and I haven't been able to make a video. I had the fortunate opportunity of getting an SC5M that I've got here and so my plan was to bang out the build really quick and race it last Friday and that's what I did. I had a blast and the truck performs really well. Now when building the truck there are some issues that I encountered. Uh, not really so much with the build. I did have one main issue but a lot of the frustrations come from the manual so I wanted to share that with you and hopefully this doesn't come out like a bash video because I am a fan of Team Associated but I wanted to let you guys know how my SC5M build went. So one of my first gripes with the Team Associated manual is that they provide you a hardware sheet. Let me just show you really quick. It is a hardware sheet that folds out and in my dense moment uh, of frustration, I tore this damn thing out. I wasn't even thinking about how you could unfold it and then as you fold the pages or go through the pages of the manual, this would still be here on the outside. Now, I, me personally, I prefer um, how Kyosho and TLR and Yokomo and X-Ray and Serpent and how almost everybody else provides a column on the page showing you what hardware you need. That's just how I prefer to do it. When I build my kits, I take the screw, washer, shim, whatever it is, and I actually line it up to the one-to-one -one diagram, and that's how I do it. I know some people build with calipers and kind of separate their hardware. Um, so really, some of the issues that I outline in this, in this video are gonna affect people in different ways, but for the way that I did it, I found this to be a frustrating manual. So like I said, I just ripped this thing out and I set it to the side. So right off the bat in the manual, you get to putting on this brace on the shock tower. This is pretty much where your body mounts go. Well, it calls for two screws. They're three by 26 millimeter button heads. They're fairly long. I pick up the screw that I think is the right screw and I take it over to my trusty hardware sheet to line it up there is no three by 26 millimeter button head screw on this list. You can see I wrote there on it, question mark. It's not included, it's been left off or forgotten. On the next page of this manual, you come to assembling the front bumper on the truck. Uh, this is actually the very last step of bag C here. Uh, you see you move on, it shows this rear front suspension block being bag C and all this other stuff being bag C. It's not. This is where bag C ends and everything else is bag D. Um, it's kind of frustrating to kind of go figure that out. I wasn't sure if maybe my bag C was missing parts and uh, I was like, well, what's going on here? So. After you figure that out, you go through this manual and you realize all the bags are labeled one letter off. Not a big deal, but um, it should be right. For that bag D here, this is on the very next page, same page here where bag C ends. This is actually the last step. Uh, I'm sorry, this is, I've confused myself. So, this is actually the last step of bag D. It shows there being four three by 10 millimeter button head screws going on to hold that rear bumper. There's only four screws left from that bag sitting there in front of me. They're three by 12 millimeter button head screws. Uh, they work fine, there's no issues, but this manual is mislabeled or the wrong screws are included. One of the two, I don't know. The one main issue that I had with the build was with this suspension hanger. It's the front, no, I'm sorry, it's the rear front uh, hinge pin block. When I screwed it in, uh, it was secure and on the chassis, and I'm looking at it and it looks slightly bent and I thought, well shoot, maybe did I, did I bend it? Did I tweak it somehow? So I go to loosen the screws on the bottom to see if maybe it untweaks and all of a sudden, my driver skips. I think, oh shoot, I, my driver has just stripped in the screw. Well, I'm looking at it and it didn't. In fact, the three millimeter nuts that go on the top of this block, they stripped out inside this block. And I guarantee anybody who owns this truck, when you go to take off that block, if you ever do, you're gonna strip those nuts. I didn't over tighten it and the plastic is just kind of, kind of weak or maybe just not the tolerances aren't tight enough around that nut 
but I actually had to take a small flat blade screwdriver and pound it in to wedge in that nut against the, the, the screwdriver and I was finally able to retighten the screws underneath to secure that block because I was actually able to loosen the screw a couple of turns before the nut stripped, which was kind of odd. So it was just dangling there loose. And that was really the only main issue with the physical build that I had. All right, so the, well, here we go. All right, you get to building the rear hubs and the CVDs. There's two pins there. I don't know if you can see that. There's a pin used for the CVD and a pin used to put on the hex on the end of the axle. The manual shows each of those pins having two different part numbers. They are unique pins. I'm looking at them in front of me when I'm building this thing and they are identical. I can't tell any difference. So I think, well, I'm gonna go to my trusty hardware sheet and see what this says. When you look at the hardware sheet, it doesn't have any pins on it. And in fact, after I looked online and you look at each of the contents of these part numbers, one of the part numbers, the pin for the CVD, includes CVD parts, barrels, and stuff like that, as well as the pin where the hub, and I think it's just a package of four pins. They're the same pin, but it's kind of confusing with two different part numbers and no clear explanation What's going on? I just stood there for a moment looking at this going, what the? All right, right on the next page, there's a, there's a little pro tip. They say you can put in a screw here and it'll help secure the hinge pin. Now there's also one of these pro tips in the steering knuckle section when you're assembling the front end. Essentially, they're saying these, uh, these set screws that do this are option parts. Now, I don't understand why a kit that is almost $300 made by a company that's been around so long and has built such fantastic vehicles is saying to buy a couple of set screws as option parts. These should be included with the kit. I don't get it. <laughs> just seeing that kind of like, just kind of you know, makes you mad a little bit and frustrated. Like, why should I go buy set screws as an option part? Now, I've been thinking about this a little bit, and it may have been that this manual was printed later after the kits were kind of going through the packing stage. I'm not really sure. It, you know, it might not be that they intentionally left these parts out, to be fair. I don't know what the situation is, but... No, another, what the moment. All right, here we go. We're assembling the servo at this point. Um, is this the servo? It shows four washers there with the four screws that hold the servo to the mount. The manual says those washers are gold. They're not gold. Trust me, they're not gold. And the servo horns with the servo, they give you four servos, I believe. Or not, four servo horns. Uh, I needed the 25 tooth, the Fataba um, servo horn. I actually have a Reedy servo in this truck. It's, it's a team associated servo. I mean, it depends on how you will wanna look at it. I mean, it's a team associated servo going on a team associated servo horn. That horn did not wanna go on the servo at all. It was so tight. I thought I was ruining the spline on the horn when I was smashing it on, literally. And the horn doesn't even go all the way down on the spline. So the aluminum lock that goes over the horn, it, it just kinda like dangled in this empty void of space uh, in between the spline and the horn. Looking at it all now assembled, I haven't had any problems. I thought maybe this servo horn is gonna strip. It hasn't, I raced it last Friday, like I said, and everything worked perfect, but the horn was a pain in the butt, and that aluminum lock ring did not work out. And my last gripe with the build of the SC5M is the gearing. This particular truck that I was gonna race is equipped with a 17.5 turn motor. I'm gonna race Blinky with it. Now, this truck includes two spur gears, which is really nice. You get an 84 for mod and a 78 for stock. The manual recommends for stock 17.5 to run a 27 tooth with that 78 tooth spur gear. 
I tried putting on a 27 tooth pinion and it would not fit. Mm -mm. It doesn't go on for my particular situation. I backed that motor out as far as I could and it would just not go on. I don't know if it's an issue with this particular motor or, or what's going on. I don't, it just wouldn't fit. So I tried a 26 tooth and it did go on. You had to align the gear mesh and the teeth on the spur gear with the teeth on the pinion just so that the pinion teeth would go through the slack of the spur gear and it finally just went on. Like it doesn't just go on, it, it just barely fits in there. And there is enough room for some gear backlash, uh, but like I couldn't get a 27 tooth on and it's needed. A 26 tooth in this truck is way too torquey on the bottom and it just tops out about 50, uh, halfway down this 100 foot straightaway at my track. Um, it's under geared quite a bit. So I just bought a 75 tooth spur gear. We'll see how that goes. That should give me a little bit more room to try different pinion gears. But <laughs> I just thought, man, this is funky. So that's, that's, that's kind of like the last of my, my little griping with this truck. The build, like I said, the physical build of putting everything all together went really well. It really was just my issues with the manual and then that suspension block in the rear front location. Everything else was really great. The shocks went together great. The uh, ball cups had no binding. They're super smooth. I know some people had issues with that with the very first release of this car, or just the 5 Series in general, but I haven't had any problems. Uh, the truck went together real well. You can see I've raced it once, but I haven't even barely scraped the chassis. And um, I'm happy with this truck. I need to dial in the setup a little bit for my particular setup, which is extremely high by clay. The kit comes with 32 and a half weight shock fluid to use in the front and rear. It does use different pistons. I think it's 1.5 in the front and 1.6 in the rear. I may have that back uh, reversed, but in either case, that shock fluid package is not ideal. I tried it out. I just wanted to see how the truck would be, the way they uh, recommend it out of the box, and that's not good for my particular applications. But uh, other than the manual and that rear block, this is a really good truck and um, I hope you guys don't think I'm bashing on it too much. It's really just the manual that it's really disappointing things that are left off or mislabeled uh, from a company like Team Associated who's been around for so long and been doing this years and years and years. I think they really dropped the ball on this manual and um, yeah. Guys, let me know what you think. Have you built one of the 5 Series vehicles? Did you have some of these problems? I'd like to know. Leave me a comment down below. Suscri subs subscribe for future videos. And until next time, peace.